Hey Nut and Fancy, what is your favorite brand of tactical knee pads? Believe it or not, I've received that question hundreds of times, both in commentaries, in my videos, and also in emails. Guys just want to know. It's an important gear item for a lot of people. Um, I'll get to the specifics on this particular brand, which yes, is my favorite, here in just a second. But like I usually do, I'm going to lay some philosophical groundwork. Bear with me. Let's ask the straight up question, do you need to wear a tactical knee pad? And for guys rolling their eyes when I use that word tactical, you might want to understand this. There are a lot of different knee pads out there. There's knee pads that are specifically suited for concrete workers. You know, there's some for rug layers. And then maybe SWAT team members, which kind of fall in the category we're talking about, and military operators. Tactical knee pads. They're lighter weight. They're more streamlined. So yes, it is a differentiation that kind of makes sense. But for just shortness, let's just say knee pads. Do you need them? I say it all depends on what you're doing in your activity. If you're doing the things that we do in the Nut and Fancy Project, running and gunning, you know, jumping and sliding, to the prone, rollover prone position on gravel, sand, dirt, sagebrush, snow sometimes, you know, kneeling down, chopping with your axe, your survival knives, hiking, camping, backpacking. My answer is definitely yes, you do. Let's talk the reasons why. And early on in the Nut and Fancy Project, I'm talking way early on, guys would roll in and they would see me wear knee pads. They'd go, ah, you wear knee pads, that's ridiculous. Generally, those are people who don't know what they're talking about. They've never done those activities, or if they have done them, it's, they've done them to a very limited scale. Okay, ready? Most players in the Nut and Fancy Project doing, doing these doing, activities that I just mentioned, stage, right? sooner or later will wear some sort of knee pad. Because if you don't, you're going to pay a price. Do you remember the acronym I, guy, I came up with, guys? LCB, Limited Capacity Body. That's an acronym I use in the Nut and Fancy Project that I came up with to remind my viewers that we are not supermen. Okay, same thing I said in my glove review. Remember that? About a year and a half ago, two years ago, there at Skaggs Police Supply, I reviewed the Hatch Gloves and some other brands. Um, still out there, and I still uh, like the information I put in that video, so it stays in the Fancy Project. But therein was introduced my philosophy about the LCB, although I didn't use that acronym at the time. In other words, your skin can get ripped up, torn up, you can bleed easily. There's all kinds of damage and injury that can befall you in your LCB if you are not wearing appropriate protective gear, whether it's gloves, knee pads, maybe eyewear. I'm an advocate of all that stuff. Always have been, and I model it all the time in my videos. You should see that. Um, knee pads, though, are they necessary? I say yes. Here's the advantages as I see them. Having used this brand of knee pad coming up on, I don't know, 10 years or so, a long time. First off, remember the snow operations. Uh, snow crew is a great example. Getting out there, doing a lot of blade work, axe work, kneeling in the snow, you kind of have to. It provides insulation from the snow. You have a foam layer there, you gotta have a hard rubber cap that insulates you from the ground. That way you're not losing your body heat through conduction. Great benefit. How about this one? Protecting your clothing. When I went through military survival training, we had some outstanding survival instructors. I just respected them so much because they knew what they were talking about and they demonstrated it like to a T in all the exercises we went, we went through. One of the things they drilled into us is do not get your clothes dirty if you can possibly avoid it. In a survival situation, if that dirt works its way into the fibers, it creates friction and it can actually tear down and, and ruin your clothing. It will tatter and shred eventually. That's in a survival situation. I understand that a lot of us, most of us are not in that. I still believe in maintaining your clothing, especially an expensive pair of multi-cam pants like this, true spec variety, twill fabric, although I like the lightweight nylon ripstop a lot better than I do this fabric. But if you're kneeling in the dirt all the time, mud, you're running and sliding in gravel, these pants are not gonna last too long. Um, for me, it makes good sense to protect them, to wear these pads and have them take the brunt of the wear and tear. And you can see these pads have taken a lot of wear and tear and they got a lot left in them too. So protect your clothing. Another reason I like knee pads, rest stops. If I'm hiking, backpacking, or if I have a really heavy loadout, maybe a level four tactically, 
That's a lot of weight, and your LCB is going to get tired. No, uh, it just is, and yeah, it's good to rest. You may look around, though. You may have no place to plop down and rest. If you have your knee pads, you almost have a built-in rest stop because you can kneel down, take a load off, don't laugh. I've done it lots, and just chill out and relax and get your now catch your breath and then press on to whatever activity you're doing. It's a built-in, kind of built-in bench, if you will, and it's comfortable, too. I'll talk about that here in a second. Okay, and then finally, as I see it, and unfancy, the main reason I wear knee pads, and all the top, the other three were excellent, I think, and viable, but it is to protect my knees. Okay, you guys ready for some gross pictures? Here they come. I have had, what, like four knee surgeries on my right knee, dating all the way back to the early 1990s when my knee came out of socket when I was playing some football. That's right. And uh, my latest operation was a few years ago, and here is post-op. Bam! Gross, nothing fancy. That looks like a fat sausage. Yeah, no doubt. It does. It's nasty. Uh, that was my knee in recuperation post-op when I got my second ACL replacement with my patellar tendon and 50% of my meniscus removed. Why? Because I had shredded it as a knee came out of socket yet again during aggressive paintball play. That's right. Uh, I tend to be a very aggressive airsoft and paintballer in my day. Uh, charging positions, laying waste to the guys. I just love it. Uh, it's just fun. And But I paid the price in my knees. So, having said that, with me, and you might be just the same, you might have some knee issues. So I am very careful about how I treat my knee now. And my knee cap specifically too. I don't want to jack it up anymore. Having spent you know months in recuperation and rebuilding it, not fun. And the next time I do it, I'm probably going to have to tear the whole thing down and redo it. In fact, a little side note, uh, the orthopedic surgeon says, yeah, you actually need some tendon repair on the back. So my knee is not 100%. It's pretty much jacked up. Linear activities are okay. Running and cutting, not so much. My knee will still come out of socket, even with the ACL replacement, because I have tendon damage. It's the way it is. We all got stuff. That's one of my issues. Knee pads come along with me. Uh, for me, they are so important that they pretty much come with me on every activity. Okay, and like I said, most TMP players generally will get some sort of knee pads sooner or later in the project. You've pretty much seen this on camera. Uh, PFI dude, for instance. He doesn't wear an external knee pad like this. He uses a neoprene insert into his BDUs. Well, I think he's running like 511 Tack Light Pros or True Spec 24-7s, but he wears a neoprene knee pads. Me, my mileage, these are the best knee pads out there. And here we go. Finally, the specifics. There's a philosophy. Lay down. Hopefully, you can see where I'm coming from. The best brand that I have ever used and have stuck with for this whole time that I've referred to are these ones right here. Alta Tactical Superflex Military Knee Pads. That's the full name. All you really need to know is Alta Tactical or Alta Knee Pads. These are the best I have ever found. I've used several other pairs. There's probably some other good ones out there. But honestly, I've been so happy with the Altas, I haven't had a need to look around and find them. These are excellent. Um, here's why. Getting back to the external nature of these knee, this knee pad design, the hard rubber cap. I have worn neoprene knee pads. I've tried those. What I have, fa what I have found is that in my aggressive you know, paintballing days, for instance, when I run and I jump down on top of some gravel, that gravel will come through to your kneecap with a neoprene pad. I don't care how thick it is. If you have enough force behind it, you're going to get your knee smacked. I know from experience, been there, done it. I don't like this style of knee pads. I like a hard armor shell over my knee, and that's what the Altas provide. Notice that it's riveted, not with steel, but with, I think, brass rivets. Pretty strong, too. I have been able to pop the, that kneecap or that hard shell off in some running and sliding maneuvers where this cap got caught and was actually ripped up. It's very rare though. It's pretty solid and a lot of people copy the Alta design. There's a lot of manufacturers do. I love the hard cap on it. How about the interior? Remember I said that it insulates you from the ground? If we look at the back of the label on the Alta pads, it has a great diagram showing how they construct it. They call it a finished inner lining. I'll talk about that here in a sec. Thick memory foam, durable fabric surface, and then molded rubber cap. There is a lot of dead air space there that prevents you from losing heat that way. I think the foam they use in these pads absolutely rocks. 
It's a closed cell foam. It's very stiff. It doesn't wear out. And again, it provides that uh, meaningful cushion when you're kind of running and gunning. A long time ago, the Alta Pad actually had a open seam here on the interior. In other words, it was two overlapping seams. Um, and I can see they changed it, uh, I don't know, about five years ago. And now it's just one continuous seam. And I love the lining in it. It's perfect. The only downside is it will pick up seeds and other debris that you have to pick out. I have not found a way uh, past that. You're just going to have to live with it. Comfortable lining. Is it breathable, nothing fancy? Well, are they, do they get hot? Yes, they do get hot. If you're in hot, uh, you know, dry, or actually even worse, humid conditions, you're going to sweat underneath these. They're not going to breathe. That's kind of a downside, I guess. Overall, though, I find the comfort on the Alta Superflex pads, thumbs up. Thumbs up. You, and you can see that on camera. After hundreds and hundreds of hours of videos in the Nothing Fancy project, what am I wearing? I'm wearing these. I wouldn't be wearing them if they didn't work. I'm not doing it for looks. I'm doing it for practicality. And that pretty much how, is how I operate all the time. I'm not trying to look cool. I'm not trying to achieve any kind of look. I'm trying to achieve system capability. In this regard, my protective gear, like gloves, knee pads, are just kind of a, an adjunct to that. How about the straps? This is probably the most critical aspect to a good knee pad design. And this is where Alta Tactical just gets it right. Notice there is no Velcro on these straps. I do not like the Velcro attachment system for knee pads, and yes, I've used it in several other designs for many years, and it, al it always has sucked. Hate it. Velcro wears out over time. It picks up seeds, debris. If it gets snowy or ice packed, it doesn't work at all. Same things I've criticized on certain knife sheaths. It really has no place in a knee pad, in my opinion. They use a brass stud, attachment stud, a nylon buckle, a thick, wide, and extremely strong elastic strap, I might say. Very high quality, and there are different levels of quality with elastic straps. A non-flexible, that is a non-elastic strap, on the bottom. This is a system that works. It does lock the knee pad into position very nicely. Um, it will not ride up or down on your knee if you're not wearing pants. Did you hear that last part? In other words, if it's against the bare skin. Here comes a little tip from me, nothing fancy. I don't recommend that. Uh, I've used these pads for a long time. Uh, I've done a lot of Zuda rides on them, actually, and that's another good time to wear knee pads, perhaps even elbow pads, and that is wearing you know, sc or scooter riding or perhaps some other type of uh, dangerous uh, transportation, if you will. But when these are riding right against your skin and you're sweating, you will get chafing because your body is sweating salt, salt gets under the straps, rub, 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 pretty, pretty soon you're pretty uncomfortable. Generally, when I'm wearing knee pads, I'm going to have long pants under them of one sort of an, an, or another. They might be nylon, in this case, a polyester cotton blend. That way, when you have the straps going, you have a layer of cloth between your skin and the straps to prevent that chafing. And under high exertion activities, I've had it where my knee area is completely soaked in sweat. Uh, not had it. I pretty much always have it in warm weather. It's just the way it is. Occasionally, I'll take the knee pad off, let it dry out, restrap them back on. That's more comfortable. Talking about how the knee, the Altas lock into place, though. They do lock very nicely. But keep in mind, with long pants, when you kneel up and then you stand up again, that pant will ride up on your leg. And since the Altas lock in to position, they ride up with it. So you have a situation where the knee pad doesn't ride down, it actually rides up. And it's not a fault of the design at all. You follow? It's just the mechanics of how it's locking onto that pant leg. So it's real easy to cure. All you do is once in a while, hold your knee pad in position, pull your pant leg down, and let it slide up and reset on the pant leg. Okay? Little tip on the Alta use, but I don't think you'll find a better strap system out there. There's other brands that use, like Hatch, like uh, Intervert and Smell and Mini 14 Against the World, had those green Hatch brand knee pads, and he hated them. They were uh, slipping down, the, uh, the straps were coming undone. He didn't like it. I think he eventually just grabbed one of my pair and ran with the Altas, okay? Uh, they call this the Alta Lock uh, with a brass stud. Great job, and it's one of the key features I love about these ones. How's the durability? Well, it has Cordura nylon here, not the cheap kind, the good kind. The stitching is excellent. I have seen very few failures with the Alta pads. Very few. I have seen some, and generally related to what I said before, separation of the rubber hard cap. 
And the place I bought it from was really cool. They just swapped it out. I think it was Opsgear. Um, hey to Opsgear.com. They sell these too. Um, great knee pads. And there's other brands out there I know. There's a myriad of choices. I think Blackhawk has some. The tactical knee pads. They have the neoprene knee pads. Uh, Alta actually has different variations of this. They have the Alta Pro Guard military knee pad. I haven't worn those, but I don't recommend them. Um, they just seem a little bit heavier and bulkier than these. And speaking of weight, 14 ounces per pair. One size fits most. That's pretty lightweight. It's seven ounces a piece for the protection you're going you're to get for your kneecap. Totally worth it. So worth it, in fact, that even on extended backpacking trips, I think I mentioned that in my extended stay backpacking series of videos, these come with me, especially if I'm anticipating survival craft of any sort. I just really have very few situations where I'm not saying to myself, man, I wish I had my knee pads with me, um, especially with my knee issues that I have. So there you have it. Where do you get them and how much? What's the value like? Nothing fancy. Around $20. If you go with the ultra cool color, these are the Coyote Browns. By the way, this is what these looked like once upon a time. These are Coyote Brown. When they come new, they look like ish. Lots of wear and tear on these and a lot more to go. Again, they're durable. They last. Here's the uh, multicam version. They have to pay a licensing fee to multicam to use that. And multicam is very particular too. They don't want their vendors or their manufacturers using crappy cloth, so that's high quality. I think 500 denier Cordura. Great job. Here's a pair of ACUs you've seen probably in Arm Serenity 2009. Uh, another great coloration. Other colors they come in, OD, although they have that goofy bright green cap on them. Uh, you see the Coyote. They have Desert Camo, Black, Woodland, and then the other ones I just showed you. Okay, and the, some coloration a little bit more. Where do I recommend to go get them? Right there. Yep, use the Nut and Fancy discount code whenever you can. Totally worth it. These are the Alta Super Flex knee pads. Do you need them? Uh, depends on what you're doing. If you're at your computer, you know, just uh, playing video games, probably not. But if you're actually out there running and gunning, doing the stuff we we do in here in TMP, you might like them. Thanks, dudes. Nut and Fancy. Sorry it took me so long to do the vid. See ya.